What do you make of that, Tom? He's, a, he's absolutely right. And one of the fallacies that many, particularly on the Republican side, make about the debt is that it is like a small family and you've got to pay your way. Uh, uh, comparing income with expenditure like a family budget, totally ignoring the point that, of course, this family can print its own money. And its money is worth something as long as global trade is denominated in dollars and global trade is growing and there's a thirst for dollars and uh, yeah, they buy treasures as a way of mm -hmm. making interest on their dollars. So I think when it comes to the debt, the big question is the long-term story. It's not the day-to-day -day fiscal cliff. That'll look after itself. If they can nail the long-term liability problem of Social Security and Medicare, then the near day-to-day -day fiscal cliff, the markets will be very forgiving over that if they can nail the long-term. But, but if they stay too short-termist as they are right now, do the markets fall? Well, markets are always short termists, aren't they? But uh, they, uh, they, there'll be absolutely no problem about Chinese or whoever buying treasuries in the long term if they know that the long term liabilities are curbed. Uh, and, and then that, and then, and that takes away a lot of fear over the whole debate. It, and then you can return to the near term problem of the debt ceiling, which is, after all, party politics. Yep. Um, but the let, yeah, let, I want to look at some of the investments you're making in, in, in the U.S. Fundamentals seem pretty strong. Um, I guess that means you, you, you're not just investing in defensives in the U.S.? I, I think increasingly we're going to be looking at the more cyclical, the growth oriented sectors, because what we're seeing in the U.S. is quite good, as you said, fundamental economic activity taking place. Pent-up demand after three or four years of below average car sales, so pent-up demand is driving the auto sector, which in America is actually quite a powerful part of the economy. The same going on in the housing market, pent-up demand leading to an improvement in housing starts and house prices. So we're, 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 we actually think that the U.S. economy uh, could grow sort of 2 2.5% this year. Not bad, bearing in mind we know from what was agreed on the New Year's Day fiscal agreement that we're going to have uh, 160 billion of fiscal consolidation taking place. And to achieve 2.5% growth against that isn't bad. It does show the sort of robustness uh, or relative robustness, certainly compared to Europe, of the underlying US economy. So, so yes, we're, we're probably going to be looking to rotate more into cyclicals uh, later on this year.